Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Yankees today is Stefan Weaver, whose record is 11-6 with a 2.33 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Jack Morris, whose record is 14-5 with a 3.75 ERA. And so, we lost a tough one yesterday, 8-4 uh, to four in the opener against the Yankees. And we were, <laughs> we were down early, uh, but we fought back. We tied the ball game up at 4, and then our bullpen uh, fell apart in the 8th uh, and ninth, ninth innings. And uh, it was pretty much over then. Uh, so, a, a bit of a bummer, because we need at least two out of the three uh, games in this series at home as it is the last series against the Yankees uh, this season. So um, this is a big game today. It's a, a big start for Jack Morris. And it will be interesting because let's just take a look real quick at Jack Morris here. Um, take a look at his log. You'll see here that uh, he gave up one run, uh, zero earned runs in his last start beating Baltimore. Uh, and that is coming off an 11-run <laughs> uh, bombardment by the Indians. Um, and previous to that game was a shutout. So if you look back here, you'll see uh, he pitched a shutout versus Toronto and then gave up 11 runs to Baltimore. The shutout, 11 runs, zero earned runs. What's going to happen today? Uh, so this could get out of hand early. We're shorthanded in the pen. We really need Jack to go deep in this game, and we need the win. So um, none of our other starters are dependable anymore. Uh, Petrie has only made one start since coming off the IL, and he did not look good. Uh, so it's a little bit, it's a, you know, we're at a frustrating point in this season where um, looking at the standings, we are one game back of the Yankees and a half game up on Boston. Both teams, which at this point I have to say are probably better than our team um, in different ways. So uh, do we have a chance? Of course we have a chance, but uh, it doesn't look good for us. So let's get started with today's ball game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. We've got Morris on the mound. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Yankees' current lineup is betting 238 against him. We are down uh, two lefties, Comstock, and Rucker Comstock gave up three runs in yesterday's ballgame. And Rucker's injured for three more days. So the only lefty in the pen is uh, Capazello. We'll have to use him wisely today. Uh, additionally, uh, Tom Filer pitched multiple innings uh, in relief of Joaquin Andahar who is terrible, so he will not be available today. Here's our lineup versus Stefan Weaver. Uh, mixed it up a little bit today, actually quite a bit. Uh, we have all these left-handers stacked um, with a couple of right-handers and switch hitters um, at the bottom of the lineup. I have no idea if this is gonna work out or not, but I'm trying to um, find a way to generate more offense uh, when we have runners on base, and this is the best thing I can come up with, with some of our better contact hitters um, at the top of the lineup. So, okay, let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the New York Yankees. Batting leadoff in center field is Otis Nixon. Batting second at second base is Willie Randolph. Batting third in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting cleanup and DHing is Brian Dayette. Batting fifth and catching is Ron Hassey. Batting sixth, playing third base is Joe Lefave. Batting seventh at first base is Dennis Worth. Batting eighth in right field is Claudel Washington. And batting ninth at shortstop is Ozzy Smith. We've got Jack on the mound. You already know about Jack. He's 14 and five with a, uh, in 23 starts with a 3.75 ERA. 105 strikeouts in a 153 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are betting only 244 against him. He's got four complete games and the three shutouts uh, that you just saw. 
His fastball tops out at 94 miles an hour. Uh, his ground ball percentage is 44.2%. He's got three outstanding pitches, including the splitter, uh, a fastball, and a slider. The 28-year-old righty goes to free agency next season. All right, take a look at the Tigers' defense today. Uh, solid all around. Kevin Bass back in center field today. Uh, maybe our weakness in the outfield. And we've got Otis Nixon leading off against Jack Morris. Here we go. Yankees in the away grays. Nixon with the base hit. So the speedy Nixon is on base. And you know he will be going against uh, Terry Kennedy. Kennedy's got an 80 or 81 arm now. I can't remember anymore. Let's take a look. Real quick, 80. So uh, only league average. Although I think we, you know he's had some pretty decent uh, defensive games as Nixon steals second base fairly easily. That is stolen base number 59 on the season. And a runner in scoring position for Randolph. We're going to pull the outfield in. I don't know if it'll do any good. But Randolph does not have any power. And Nixon's got a 90 speed. So he's probably going to score on a base hit no matter what. Uh, Morris strikes out Randolph. That's out number one. Here is the, uh, what I would guess is the MVP of the American League, Steve Kemp, with one down. And Nixon tries to steal third, and Kennedy guns him down. That's incredible. Great job by Kennedy. So two outs. Bases are clear now. As Steve Kemp's got a 1-2 count, and he lines it right at Trammell. Actually, I take that back. That is not Trammell. That is uh, Doug Baker at short today. All right, let's uh, go ahead and do the Tigers lineup rundown. We'll get it straight. Batting leadoff today in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting second at second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting third at first base is Greg Brock. Batting cleanup playing third base is George Brett. Batting fifth and catching is Terry Kennedy. Batting sixth in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting seventh in center field is Kevin Bass. Batting eighth and DHing is Mickey Hatcher. And batting ninth, playing shortstop today is Doug Baker. Okay, let's take a look at Stefan Weaver. Uh, one of the better pitchers in all of baseball. He's making his 24th start this year. 11 and 6 with a 2.33 ERA. Look at that. He's never had a season above 2.98. A 116 strikeouts in 177 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are betting 2.25 against him. Five complete games, two shutouts. His fastball tops out at 93 miles an hour. Uh, his ground ball percentage is 47.8. His curveball is his out pitch, rated at 94. Maybe you would say his fastball might be as well. It's rated 91. Two pitches above 90. Um, that is elite status. And the splitter at 80. Overall rated a 95. The 25-year-old right-hander is making $2 million a year. Goes to free agency in 1987. There is the Yankees defense full of gold glovers. Uh, maybe the only weakness is at first base with... Uh, Dennis Worth. Okay, and here is Kirk Gibson leading off. We got Gibson give me, uh, leading off today. Give him a chance to try to break out of his horrific slump, and there's a base hit to right. So Gibby coming through. Do we want to go for two? We do not. So the leadoff man is on, and now we've got a hit and run situation with <laughs> excuse me, Sweet Lou. Lou, 6 for 18 against Weaver. Dropping down the lineup. And Lou scorches it to center field. 367 feet. That is not going to get it done. So we are going to send Gibby here. Gibby is 8 for 17 in stolen bases this year. After stealing 29 last year. But we got to give him a shot here. Greg Brock at the plate. And Gibby steals second base. There we go. Ninth stolen base. Nine out of 18. Youch. And that will bring up Greg Brock. Brock's got a 1-0 count here. 
Uh, probably the hottest hitter on our team. Weaver wants nothing to do with him. Walks Brock to get to George Brett. I, I love Brett batting after Brock. Kind of protection in this situation. Also a double play possibility. Brett sends it to center. That won't get it done. Gibby will hold at second. And leave it up to Terry Kennedy. The last of the lefties in the lineup here. And he strikes out looking. He did work that strikeout though. Nine pitches. We go to the top of the second inning. No score. Here's Brian Dayette leading off against Jack Morris. Dayette had a pretty good ball game yesterday as that ball falls in front of Bass. And the leadoff man is on again. Runner on first. Here's Ron Hassey, former MVP. The ground ball to Brett third. And he can only get the runner at first. That must have been a hit and run situation. We had Hatcher at third base yesterday. Actually played pretty solid defensively. No errors. I guess that is a big plus. And then Brian Dayette steals third base. That makes no sense at all. His fourth on the season. He's four for eight. Um, an 0-1 count. I guess we've got a... You know what? I'm going to bring first base in. This didn't work yesterday. Um, where the runner scored on a ground ball on a pulled in uh, position player. But I don't know. We'll give it a shot here. Here's Joe Lefebvre. Full count. Striking him out. Maybe it won't even matter. Second K for Morris. That will bring up Dennis Worth. Worth batting 269, eight home runs. And he pops it up on the infield, so Morris might get out of this jam with Baker making the catch. Nicely done. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Glenn Wilson leading off, followed by Bass and Hatcher. This big Willie style leading it off with a... A strikeout on a 76 mile an hour 12 to 6 curve. Second K for Weaver. Kevin Bass. Struggling, batting 203. But he does come through in big situations. Grounding out to first. And here's Mickey Hatcher. We dropped him down to the number 8 spot. He had 2 RBI in yesterday's game. But for the most part, has been on a severe downhill um, slope. So we go to the top of the third as he grounds out to short. No score. Claude L. Washington leading off against Jack. Washington's got a home run in his career against Jack Morris. Here he flies out to deep center field. 348 feet. One down. Here is the Wizard of Oz, Ozzy Smith. Pounding it into the dirt, right back at Morris. He tosses it over to Brock for out number two. And we're back to the top of the lineup. With Otis Nixon, he had a base hit to lead off the ball game. And then stole second, was tossed out at third. Ground ball to Brock, and that'll do it. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Game is moving along. Here's Doug Baker. Getting a spot start today as uh, Trammell and Whitaker are both listed as tired. So we gave Trammell the day off today and we'll give Whitaker the day off tomorrow. Baker scorches into center field, frozen rope, unfortunately, in the vicinity of Nixon. There's one down. That will bring up Gibson, Gibby. Only Tigers hit so far today. Striking out looking. Two quick outs for Weaver. And then Lou lifts it to center. Nixon makes the catch. Moving on to the fourth. So far, Morris doesn't look like a pitcher that's going to give up 11 runs. It's early. Randolph. Looking for his first home run. Drives it deep to left. 337 feet. But Gibby's got it. One down. Steve Kemp testing Gibby also. That's 
That's where Steve Kemp used to play in a Tiger uniform out there in Gibby's spot. If you look at Gibby's, um, if you look at Gibby's career, you'll see in 1980 he only played 18 games in the majors for us because if we had Steve Kemp. Um, he wasn't Gibby wasn't ready yet. All right, two down. Here's Brian Dayet, full count. Oh wow, Morris wasn't even close. Ball four, Dayet takes first. That will bring up Ron Hassey. Feel like we should guard the lines, but we're gonna play it straight away. Oh yeah, I should have played the lines. Damn it. Off the wall, Dayet goes to third. Bad call on my part. I should have went with my gut. As Hassey gets his 21st double on the season. So second and third, two down. Here's Joe Lefebvre, another tough lefty. 2-0 count. A ground ball to first. Brock makes the play. So another goose egg for Morris. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning with Greg Brock leading off. Brock, Brett, Kennedy do up. Brock two for three in his career against Stefan Weaver. Striking out looking. Fourth K for Weaver. Next up is George Brett. And Tigers hitters. This, I mean, this lineup switch definitely has not made a difference so far. Stefan Weaver, I mean, uh, what is his uh, career opponent's batting average? Yeah, 211. So this is a tough pitcher to begin with. Kennedy singles to center. There we go. Keeping his average just above 300, 302 now. He's been a good surprise. Two down. We're going to let Wilson just take a cut here. Not really a hit and run situation. Oh, there we go. Rips it into left. Up against the wall. Wilson has himself a double. That is his 11th double of the season. Solid numbers for Glenn Wilson. And that will leave it up to Big Hit Bass. That's why he's in the lineup. These type of situations. Here we go. Second and third, two down. 1-1 one, one count. And a base hit to left. Let's score two. Come on, Wilson. Yes, we got both of those runs in. We don't need to try for two. Big hit Bass comes through. And it's 2 nothing Detroit. Let's see if Sticky Mickey can keep it going here. Nope, just a lazy fly ball to center. Nixon's got to go back to get it. And the Tigers take a 2 nothing lead here as we head to the top of the fifth. Bottom of the lineup coming up for the Yankees, 7-8-9, as Dennis Wirth leads off against Jack Morse. Morris walks the leadoff man. So that's at least three of the five innings a leadoff man has been on. Claudel Washington, next man up. Oh, here goes the 11 runs. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, come on. Field in. Ozzie Smith, runners on first and second. Round ball to second, and we get a double play out of it. Nicely done. Did not expect that to happen, but we'll take a double play. Now it's Otis Nixon, who absolutely crushes us. We're going to pull the outfield in, so nothing drops in if we can possibly prevent it from happening. Here we go, full count to Nixon, and he walks it. Come on, now this is becoming kind of stupid. I mean... He's got three pitches above average. You tell me he's walked three batters in this inning, including the fastest base runner in the game. That makes no sense. Um, we're going to pull the outfield in again because it's uh, Willie Randolph. Yep. This game's so fucking stupid. I swear to God. Base hit for Randolph. Scores a run. And now it's Steve Kemp. Yep, that was nothing we were going to be able to do about that. 4-2 Yankees and the onslaught. 
has begun. Yeah, there was that inning was written before it ever happened. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's four to two. Uh, there's no way we're going to score any more runs against Stefan Weaver. Our only hope is to get him out of the ball game. Um, but when you're swinging at the first pitch, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, the two runs, I, it kind of felt in the moment that that was like the limit that we were going to get. Uh, we'll find out. we got Gibby on base with his second hit today. So in the leadoff role, that's paid off. And then a double play. So we go to the top of the sixth inning. It would be nice to get one, maybe two more out of Morris, regardless of the 11 runs. Another base hit to lead off the inning. So we're going to just be a button pusher here. Wow. All these full counts. Morris had 107 pitches. This will be the last one, last batter. Yep, and a base hit from the weakest hitter in baseball. Well, let's just give up the 11 runs here and get it over with. Nope, nope, we're going to stop at five, it looks like. All right. Otis Nixon, absolutely driving in runs like he's uh, George Brett. Of course, George Brett strikes out, but Otis Nixon, uh, wow. We just got shut down there. Three lefties, so much for the lefty lineup. Uh, I guess we're going to have Morris pitch to Randolph here. And we'll bring in our only lefty, which is Cappy. Here's Kemp. Kemp went deep. He uh, hit his 24th home run. That's a nice one, two, three innings. So Morris does not give up 11 runs. Actually, he gives up exactly, not exactly half, but half of that. So um, maybe that's the key there. It's four strikeouts in a row. That was a one, two count as well. Oh, well. 94 pitches. So somehow... Hey, there's a base hit for Hatcher. We are uh, moving up Weaver's pitch count, uh, but he could probably go 120, 125 pitches. So we've still got some work to do here. Here's Doug Baker. A grounder to first, settle in the inning. We are going to the eighth inning. It's five to two Yankees. Hassey. Gets a double off of a left-hander. That's his second double today. 22nd of the season. That was another leadoff man getting on. And then Brock makes an error. Awesome. Awesome. What a great fucking game. Base hit to right. We're, they're going to get their 11 runs. A comeback here to the pitcher, but of course... Yep, Lefebvre holds. Pull the outfield in. Smith popping it up. Will Cappy make his own catch? Uh, in front of home plate. I don't know who made the catch on that. I don't think I'd want Capazelle to make the catch. Here's uh, Otis Nixon. One for three today. Stolen base. And another hit. Clutch. Otis Nixon, clutch. Look at this guy. He's got 40 RBI. Driving in a run every chance he can. Unlike uh, our hitters. Another walk. One more. A grand slam here. We'll uh, give him the 11 runs. Well, they're going to bring in Andy McGaffigan. And uh, not great numbers here. Actually, on the Giants, he was a, he was a Yankee draft pick, um, but you'll see by '83 he was actually in a San Francisco Giants uniform. Not great numbers. 
but I don't think that's going to mean anything here. As Gibby strikes out, Lou. Lou, doesn't matter how tired Lou is. Lou goes deep. That is his 17th home run on the season. Seven to three. Brock Ness Monster gets a double, maybe a triple. Why not? We're down a ton of runs. Yeah, there's a triple for Brock. That is Brock's third triple on the season. Look at his OPS. Over a thousand. Here's George Brett, the anti Otis Nixon. Oh no! It's going to make me eat those words with a two-run shot. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the little ball tickle that they give you at the end of the game. Oh, see, doesn't that feel good? Kennedy getting a walk, and then Wilson flipping it to right. And Kevin Bass, does he have one more big hit in him? Nope. Yeah, we go to the ninth. All right, well, who has the least amount of innings between, I guess it's going to be Roy Thomas. We'll bring in Roy. Our boy Roy, he has been pretty damn good. 28 appearances, 0-1 with a 154 ERA. Uh, I don't like those walk numbers. Those have really been shooting upward. 24 Ks and 35 innings pitched. Pumps are batting 167 against them. That's how the game corrects for the lack of hits. It still gets that whip up there with the um, walks. So um, I guess that's how they they screw him over. Here he is facing Brian Dayette in the ninth inning. This is kind of like the season on the line right now. I mean, yeah. So good job by Thomas. If we can't come back here, oh, they're bringing in Kurt Kaufman. This guy is pretty much lights out. He's got a 97 mile an hour fastball. He is their closers. He is their closer. He's got 17 saves, three tight buttholes. His fastball rated a 99. <laughs> oh, man. And we've got Hatcher, Baker, and Gibson. If Hatcher gets on, we will not be hitting Baker. I can tell you that right now. Here we go. Oh. All right. Well, now we may as well hit Baker because it don't matter. Yeah, Baker's never seen anything like that. And Gibby. A 1-2-3 ninth inning. Uh, I mean, honestly, that has got to be the season. I mean, even if we come back and win tomorrow, um, I think that pretty much shuts it down for us. We have no... I mean, the, our next four starting pitchers, none of them are capable of going five innings. Uh, we have Petrie tomorrow versus Slagle. We really don't know what he has to offer, but... If, um, you know, the, his first start was any indication, he doesn't have it. Brian Kelly, not great, despite having great ratings. Dave Rosma, uh, he can only go five, and he might keep you in the ballgame. And then, of course, Andahar is total hot trash. So let's take a look at the standings. We fall the two games back. Two games is nothing, but uh, it's it's may as well be a country mile now. So... Um, we are the second team to have uh, 100 home runs and 100 stolen bases. The first being Oakland. Wow, that's interesting. Very cool. Oakland, that's a tough team. They're five games back. Uh, the White Sox are on a six-game winning streak. That's incredible. Digging themselves out of the um, cellar, but, I mean, it's a race for the bottom between those three teams. Uh, okay, let's take a look at headline news. Tony Brewer has five RBIs, and that's not enough. Four for five, a walk, a double, a home run. Five RBI, that's awesome. Uh, Rod Allen, number two in the American League in home runs, had two more homers. How is he not the headline news? Sap Randall gets a couple of hits. Fran Mullins. Sa <laughs> Rod, Sap, and Fran. 
on the White Sox. Brown, what could Brown do for you? He goes four for five in a 13 to three victory. Uh, Carney Lansford, two for five with a home run. Dickey, did he get? A, did Dickey get a dong? He has two dongs in his last 20, 12 at bats. And Don Baylor, how would you like to have Don Baylor as your number nine hitter? Uh, he's only batting two thirty six. What else we got? Manning has a stretched knee ligament, and he's going to miss a month uh, for the Orioles, right? Yeah. So let's read more about that in transactions. Um, yeah, there it is. God, this is kind of out of order, right? Rick Manning is going to miss a month for Baltimore. So I guess that's Ron LaFleur going back into center field for them. And then a couple of Phillies, Bob Boone, age 35, retiring. <laughs> oh, God. He hadn't played in this game since 1980. This guy had a storied career, and he got a cup of coffee with the uh, Phillies in 82. Otherwise, couldn't buy in a bat. He was on the Angels in 83, and his career was far from over. And, of course, Pete Rose, he was on the Phillies in 83. So he finishes with, well, he couldn't even get in a bat in 81. Did he have, uh, yeah, 3,500 hits. Looks like he's not going to the Hall of Fame. Um, all right, well, that's going to do that. We're going to pull up the box score and get out of here. Who's the player of the game today? Is it Sweet Lou again? He had that big shot. Um, is it Big Hit Bass with the two RBIs? At least gave us a glimmer of hope. Um, yeah, I mean, George Brett hit a home run, but that was garbage time. Uh, all, now, all of our lefties did get a hit today. Uh, in, you know that in that row there, they just weren't con they, they weren't helpful. Um, tons of strikeouts, eleven Tiger strikeouts, eight by Weaver. Um, good job by the Yankee bullpen. They are the superior team, no doubt about it. Uh, somehow Jack got through six and a third, giving up five runs, walking five. That is fucking bullshit. If I've ever seen it before in my life, I swear to God, that's exactly what it would look like. George Capazello uh, had a bad game, but there was an error by Brock, and that was an under run. Yeah, so um, he got screwed over by Brock. Roy Thomas did his gerb. That's it. We're going to come back tomorrow, game three of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great night.